Hi guys, this is Sadek from Redmond.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Linux OS 22 ROM based on Android 15 onto the Nothing Phone 2. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tool for my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In our case, we have done the extraction in C drive and as you could see, do you have the files of platform tools? Moving on. You will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. The debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, you have to go to the settings menu on your phone, then go to about phone and tap, then go to nothing OS and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that happens, go back again, go back. Now go to system and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. You might get one more prompt. So tap on allow and with this debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. For that there are two ways out. Either type in CMD in the address bar of platform tools and hit enter or open CMD window from the start menu. Then type in CD space and paste the path of platform tools directory and hit enter. Either of the two ways will work. Just make sure that you are now inside the platform tools directory. Once that is done, type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB fixes and verify that you are getting a serial ID. Your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do know that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, then you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. In short, just boot your phone to fast boot mode and use the fast boot flashing unlock command. You will then get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the boot order and press the power key to confirm. Once that is done, your phone will undergo a wipe and the boot order will be unlocked and then the phone will boot to the OS. Once it's boot to the OS, make sure to re-enable debugging once again. Moving on, you will now get hold of the latest Linux OS ROM zip file from here. And apart from that also, download the super empty IMG file. This is required to fix the error applying update 7 error code key installed device open error. If you don't flash the super empty IMG file and wipe the super partition, then you are bound to get this error message by flashing the ROM zip file. So please make sure to get hold of this file as well. The super empty IMG and the ROM zip file. Make sure to download both the files. Once you have got the files, let's move ahead with the next step. So now you have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode. For that type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. And the phone will now reboot into fast boot mode. While that is happening, you should transfer the ROM file and the super empty IMG file inside the platform tools directory. So let's do that. It will take a few seconds. Once that is done, you should also verify the fast boot connection on your PC. So type in fast boot devices and verify that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install the fastboot drivers on your PC. We have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and install the drivers. Once that is done, right click on the windows icon and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode. And we are now good to go ahead. So let's now start off with the flashing process. In this regard, your first course of action is to flash the Linux OS ROM zip file. But for that, you will have to flash the Orange Fox recovery. So go to this link and let's now start off with the flashing of the recovery file. So we are done with the first step. Likewise, we are also done with the second step. The third step is also done. Now get hold of the recovery file from this link. It's recommended to download the stable build and not the beta build. So get hold of the recovery zip file. Once you have got the recovery zip file, you will now have to extract it as well. So this will be something like this. Go to the folder, extract it and choose the recovery IMG file Then transfer the recovery IMG file inside the platform tools folder as well. So let me do that. This is the recovery IMG file, transfer it here. So as of now, the ROM zip file, the super empty IMG file and the recovery file, all of them should be inside the platform tools directory. If that's well and good, then you will flash the recovery file onto the recovery partition of your phone. Type in fastboot, flash partition name which is recovery and file name which is recovery.img hit enter and the orange fox recovery will now be flashed onto your phone so now let's get started with the flashing of the rom file but before that we'll have to flash the super empty img file so that we don't flash the 
एरर कोड सेवन सो सिंपली कॉपी दिस कमांड फास्टफूड वाइप सुपर सुपर एम टी डॉट आई एम जी एंड ऑल्सो मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव द फाइल इन साइड प्लेटफॉर्म टूल्स डायरेक्टरी इफ दैट बिलन कोड देन सिंपली पेज द कमांड हियर हिट एंटर एंड वंस दैट इज डन यू मे नॉट टाइप इन द फास्टफूड रिबोट रिकवरी कमांड एंड योर फोन विल नॉट रिबोट टू द और इन फॉर्स रिकवरी दिस माइंड टेक अ फ्यू सेकेंड सो लेट जस्ट वेट फॉर दैट टू हैपन एंड वंस इज इन द ऑरेंज फॉर्स रिकवरी यू कुड देन फ्लैश द रॉन्ग फाइल विदाउट एन इश्यू वॉट्स एवर सो लेट्स जस्ट वेट फॉर दैट टू हैपन एंड एज यू कुड सी वी अनाउंस आई दी ऑरेंज फॉर्स रिकवरी एंड नाउ योर फर्स्ट कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन इज टू डू अ फॉर्मेट डेटा विच विल वाइप ऑफ ऑल दी डेटा फ्रॉम योर फोन सो मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव टेकन अ बैकअप बिफोर हैंड इफ दैट्स वेल एंड गुड then let's go to the wipe section of the recovery and then do a format data so go to wipe format data type in yes hit the orange check mark and the format data is now complete once that is done go back and now you may transfer the rom zip file onto your phone so copy the rom zip file and transfer it here as you could see in my case i cannot access the storage so you should do one thing first try to do a reboot to the recovery and this will remount the data partition Once that happens, you will try to access the phone storage and then do a transfer. But even if that does not works out, it's not an issue. We could also use the ADB push command to get the job done. I'll show you both the approaches. So just give me a second and let me first verify. So my phone should now be visible here in a few seconds. Let's just wait for the same and verify the result. So the phone is now visible here, but still, as you could see, the internal storage is shown as blank. I cannot access the storage. so that's not a cause of concern you could also use the adb push command to get the job done for that you will have to first off transfer the rom zip file inside the platform tools directory which we have done already now rename the file to something shorter so let's rename it to rom and the complete name becomes rom.zip once that is done type in the command adb push file name which is rom.zip space forward slash and the location on your phone which is sd card and hit enter and the rom file will not be transferred onto your phone you might not be able to keep a track in the cmd window but the file is being transferred in the back end moreover you could also use any other directory apart from the sd card but it's recommended to use the sd card but you could also use the data temp or any other of your choice but for now we are using the sd card so let's just wait for a few more seconds for the file to be transferred so guys as you could see the file has now been transferred so we will now flash the rom zip file So go to the file section, and from here, as you could see, we have the file. Choose it, and do a right swipe to flash it. The flashing will now start, and it will take up to around six to eight minutes. So always keep in mind that if your phone is not visible on your PC, or if you cannot access the storage, then you could use the ADB push command, or even a USB OTG device if you have. But please do not use the ADB side load method. That might prove to, to be a risky approach for flashing the ROM via ADB side load. It comes in handy in AOSP recovery such as Linux OS or CR Droid. But in case of Orange Fox and WRP recovery, it's always recommended to use the install option. That is why I have not used the ADB side load. Instead, either use the ADB push command, the USB mount method, or the USB OTG device if you have in hand. So with that said, the ROM is being flashed. I will take up to around uh, around two to three minutes more. So let's just wait for that to happen. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Although you might get a few warning signs, that is completely normal and nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you're getting the success method at the top. If that's well and good, moving on. So if you now want to flash any other zip file, then you will first have to do a reboot to recovery, and then you will flash the zip file of your choice. For example, if you want to flash Magis for root, then please first do a reboot to recovery and only then flash the zip file. Once that is done, your last course of action should be to do a format data once again. Just to be on safer side, so let's do that. Although it might not be compulsory, but it's always recommended to do a format data before and after flashing the ROM zip file. Once that is done, as you could see, currently we are on slot A, but the ROM has been flashed in slot B. For example, currently we are on slot A. Slot A is active, but the ROM has been flashed to the slot B. So now tap on switch to slot B. If in your case the slot B is active, then the ROM might have been flashed to slot A. And you will then have to make a switch to slot A. But in my case, the ROM has been flashed to slot B, and because the slot A is active, the ROM is always flashed to the inactive slot, which in my case is the slot B. So I will first switch to slot B, and once that is done, you will see the changing boot slots completed. Tap on Reboot System, 
you might get a warning that no OS installed and system partition is empty. This is just a false error message. You must simply ignore it and swipe to reboot and your phone will now reboot to the OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time. That is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. So with that said, let's wait for the boot animation or at least the boot logo to appear. Either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. And the lineage OS boot animation should now appear in a few more seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and then we will have a look at the ROM file as well. And as you could see, this is the boot animation. So give it a few more seconds and then we will have a look at the ROM zip file. So with this, we are inside this setup screen. Let's now get started. Let's select the English region, skip the Wi-Fi if you want. You may connect your phone to the Wi-Fi, link your Google account and restore all the data. But for now, I'm skipping the steps just to fasten, fasten up the process of the ROM setup. And we are now inside the Linux OS 22 ROM based on Android 15. And these are the only few apps installed. As you might be aware, Linux OS does not have many blotwares. With that said, here are some of the Android 15 features. Let me have a look whether they are there in this ROM or not. First is the revamps settings menu, which you could see is there. Then the power menu and PS styles is also there. And screen recording in a single app. As you could see, you could easily do a recording in just one app. Tap on next and choose the app of your choice. Then the recording will only take place inside that single app. As soon as you make a switch to any other app, then the recording will pause and only resume once you are back inside that app. And apart from that, you have the predictive back gesture. This is the, as you could see, back gesture with giving you a sneak peek of what is behind the screen. Then we have a new volume panel as well. So it does not have a new volume panel. It's, it's still the older one, but that's not a cause of major concern. That will get the job done still. Then we have a battery information page. As you could see, the battery count option is missing from here. But the rest of the data is there. Next up, we have the private space. For the private space, I will first have to set up a lock screen. So I'm using a simple pattern just to fasten up the process. A simple pattern will get the job done. And let me skip the fingerprint for now. And now let's access the private space. And you may either use the same lock screen pattern which you have for the lock or choose a new lock screen pattern for private space. As of now, I'm choosing a new lock. You may again choose either the fingerprint password pattern is completely up to you. I'm choosing a pattern just to speed up the process. So this is the pattern for my private space. Confirm. I'm skipping the fingerprint for now. And with this, the private space should now be set up in a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. And it's now done and dusted. And you could access the private space from the app drawer. Tap on the lock screen. And then you could access the app from here. You may also add new apps to this. And you may even hide the private space from the app drawer. For that, type tap on the settings icon and go to hide private space. Enable the toggle next to it, tap on got it and lock it from here. And as you could see, the private space is hidden now to access it. You will have to search it over here. Type, okay, the swipe keyboard is not enabled by default. That's quite strange. So type in private space. And if it's not able to show here, then it's just a bug which might be rectified in the next build. In the time being, what you could do is simply go to the settings menu, then security and privacy, and then you may access it from here. Confirm the lock screen pattern and now the private space is enabled as you could see. It's now unlocked on your phone. And once again, when you lock it, it will be gone from here. It's also a nifty addition. Then on some ROMs, you get the taskbar option as well, which is not here. Again, it's not a major cause of concern because taskbar mostly comes in handy with fold foldables and tablets. With that said, there is some there are some basic tweaks. Although you will not get the tweaks as with, with regard to the CR draw or Evolution X ROM because they are known for customizations, but on the other hand, the CR dot is known to be a bare bone ROM with just the required features. It's a smooth, clean, and one of the most fastest OS out there. But that said, you could still go to the display section or the paper and size section rather, and you may change the theme from here. Likewise, choose a different color from here, go to other colors, and enable or disable the dark theme from here. Apart from that, you may also change the wallpaper on device wallpaper. There are quite a few wallpapers and whatever you choose, the theme of your phone will change accordingly based on the material UI theming engine. Then next up, we also have the shortcuts and icons. Let me enable a few icons over here. Let's say DND, airplane mode and torch. And you keep a track of the icons at the top right. And for example, let's say Kai and 
hit the apply button as you could see they are implemented now apart from that there are a few font style as well that you could choose from and whatever font you apply will be applied across the entire UI and UX of the OS and even on the third party apps as well if you go to the home screen you have the option to enable the theme icons and they are enabled and then you may change the app grid size it has the 6 cross 6 but 5 cross 5 is the one which I always use then icons and font are done icon shape is also there let's go with the pebble one and you could choose from any one of these icon style hit the apply button and the same will be applied across the home screen and the app drawer moreover in case of the theme icons as you could see is currently only applied in the home screen but not in the app drawer but there exists a main option using which you could apply the theme icon in the app drawer as well for that long press here choose home settings and en enable use theme icon in drawer as well and now as you could see it's enabled in the app drawer as well this settings look much nice in the dark theme so let me enable the dark theme from here just give me a second so let's go here enable dark theme and now this looks much better and apart from that are the usable tools that you get in any USB ROM. So guys with that in mind I round off this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching.